Hi, I'm Hey Duke, and I'm here today with Chip King of the Body. How are you doing today? Doing good. Excellent. Um, so how's the tour been going so far? It's going real good. I kind of didn't know what to expect with uh, Auschwitz. I've never seen them before, and Creeper, so it's been cool. Everyone's real great. So two brand new bands to tour with for you? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, cool. I heard like Auschwitz way back, but it's a lot different than when I first heard it. And, All right. But yeah, it's awesome. Everyone's super cool, which Very is cool. the most important thing to me. So. All right. So let's dive in a little bit to what you guys are all about. Um, I can never define what the body is. So if you had to explain to someone who'd never heard your music, um, how yeah. would you explain that? Uh, probably like, maybe like two people with a very bleak view of the world in existence okay. trying to Amplify that through speakers. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Just trying to present what we what we know, you know. And I, th I feel like the music kind of gets like reflects that as well. I'm not sure. Or at least we try to. You know. That's uh, bleak is a good word to use. I think that's I definitely hear that. Um, so you recently released a new album. No one deserves happiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's almost I've, a year though now. Is it almost? Yeah. A year? Time flies. Um, I still refer to it as the pink record. I but, don't know. Yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. Um, I've seen it actually described as a pop album. I think you, you yeah, that was a weird. That was a weird a joke. Like that. Like, yeah, it was a joke that kind of went out of control. We were like, we just want to make the closest pop record, you know. Okay. But it ended up just being like. We were going at it, like, I, I feel like for a long time we would just go, like, guitars and drums, mm -hmm. like, kind of our standard, like, you know, how we had been doing things, and then layer things over the top, like, like, do the electronic stuff for, like, more noise, or, or just try different things over the top of that, but the last, like, even some on Christ Redeemers, and then especially on No One Deserves Happiness, we started kind of writing it initially, and, like, the, like, trying to, to work the stuff we were enjoying more, which is, like, the electronic stuff and the layering, like, in originally, and then kind of going over the over the top of that with, like, the guitar and stuff, like, seeing where that fit in, where we wanted it to be, like, you know, like, the, the like, heavy, like, guitar feel and stuff. So it, it feels different writing it and playing it like that, which is, like, our new setup is all electronic. And, uh... It's kind of trying to reflect how we're writing music now and like being able to play songs that we recorded that we haven't been able to because the limitations are like, you know, what we can do with like a guitar and like drums and then also trying to do like, like affected things and loops and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. It's fun. Well, I remember seeing you at Gilead and you had the guitar and then over here was some electronic stuff yeah, and leaking yeah. on the drums and, and was, the microphone I mean, there. Yeah. It's a lot to handle. I liked doing that, but it's now I'm like kind of, I feel like I had like, heavy limitations on guitar playing like I don't feel like I, I kind of like do one thing and I was like I, I feel like I'm just like cheating sure because I keep doing the same thing and it's like try to do it different like I, I just like try to get away from like playing like riff oriented stuff on guitar mm -hmm. but then it kind of was like oh no it still sounds like a guitar so I'd be kind of bummed out right but and then just like Lee wanted to do like more programming on the drums and effects stuff and so I think like I don't know, it's kind of like shaking it up a little bit for us, which I think is kind of enjoyable about it, you know? Yeah, like, sure. It's a little different. But. So did you have a theme or a purpose or, or something like that that you wanted to get across with that album? I feel like it's kind of a continuing theme across our whole, I guess you'd say, body of work. I don't know, like, I mean, the world doesn't get much better, so there's not any real lack of inspiration. Sure in terms of like talking about what a pile of steaming crap the world seems to be and continue to be and sure. increasingly be. I don't know. Uh, so I also, oh, I want to ask, where do you want to go next with just the, the duo, the two of you? <sighs> Something else in the works? I mean, we're working on a new record slowly. Like we've gone in a, for a couple of days at a time when we've been back in Rhode Island at, our, okay. at, our, at Machines of Magnets. So it's, Stuff's, stuff's like sizzling in there and like we did another um, Full of Hell collaboration right I want to talk about at the that end as of well. that tool that we did with them and we did the initial recordings but now there's like finishing touches and like we haven't got back together and talked about like what 
what people like or don't like about it. So there's still a little work to do on that. But it's a little different, not quite as like. I feel like the first one felt very violent and like. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, yeah, the new one doesn't sound quite as like that to me, but it's different. So I'm, I'm excited. I haven't really heard it. I haven't listened to it for like a couple months. Okay. Like we listened to it together. Like, I mean, there's definitely like. Like, not at the recording, I listen to it after, but... Okay. I gotta get back into it and be like, see what I really like. But. So you actually have a second collaboration with Full yeah, House yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah. That's sweet. Um, one Day You Will Ache Like I Ache, to me, which is the first collaboration with Yeah, yeah. Album, was one of the most compelling records I've heard awesome. in a long time. Was, Thank you. It was amazing. I actually wanted to ask you about that. Um, how did that whole collaboration come about? I know you guys like um, to get together with other projects Yeah, we. I mean, stuff. we we played with Full Hell a long time ago. Um like years ago and then we kept in touch with them and talked about doing a tour together okay. and it finally came together and we just like it was nice it was like we instantly like we're just good friends sure. and so then uh, when we talked about like touring more and stuff we're like well we should just record a collaboration because that'll yeah. be fun like we're different enough to like you know like have I think have things bounce around and be neat and then also like just awesome people so it's like oh I want to work with them because they're good friends and like see what happens yeah really cool but, can you tell me how the Leonard Cohen cover happened oh that was all Dylan okay. I think Dylan wanted to do that one okay because I didn't even know I we heard about that like when we were in the in the studio okay. I think he had told me and we're like oh, do it well, I yeah. grew up in Canada with so Leonard Cohen so he's been he's, I mean, his music's so dark so he's been a favorite yeah. of mine so I thought oh, that yeah. was really cool and I thought that was an amazing cover of it oh yeah um so you do have a new Full of Hell collaboration mm -hmm. coming out. Any other new collabs in the works? Well, we did one, uh, if you saw the CD of like Vampelia from Japan, okay. that we had done a couple years ago. And uh, that's, I think Gilead Media is putting that out on vinyl this year. Okay. But it's it's been out for a while. Yeah. But that was kind of like, I we went over and did the tour in Japan with them, with Vampelia, and mm -hmm. played a couple of songs from it, which was a total trip. Because yeah. what I had done, what we had done for the, the our collaborative part was almost all electronic. So going over there and trying to play it on guitar was kind of funny. Yeah. So I was like, I don't like, I didn't initially play it on guitar. So I was like, I don't know, but it was awesome. It sounded like, okay. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And they're like, I mean, I just felt like an idiot playing with them because they were all like so talented and like learned on their instruments. Sure. And I'm just kind of like this hack gorilla, you know, like slapping the guitar with some sausage fingers. And it was, it was just like, it was super awesome. It came That's out really, really cool. great. Yeah. Um, do you have a dream collaboration? Someone that you just would love to work with? I don't know, man. The inside the box, outside I don't the know. box. I mean, you guys want to do a collaboration with Madonna it, or besides, something? Besides the collaboration with Hex and Cloak, and then we did uh -huh. subsequently, like, we haven't met in person, but at least talked to him a bunch. And he's great, but, like, we've had a lot of, um, like, everyone we've collaborated with has been, like, great friends. So it's like... Sure. It'd be, it seems weird to be like, oh, well, we'll just do this with someone, you know, without, like, a history. Right, yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure, like, I mean, probably we'd want to do something with, like, The weekend if that was, like, oh, cool. the best, because he's awesome. And then, I don't know, all kinds of weird stuff. All right. Who out there do you think is really pushing the boundaries in music, whether metal music or otherwise? Anything come to mind? I don't know. I keep yeah, going. I keep guys. going backwards in music. <laughs> I just feel like I listen to old Judas Priest and okay. ELO. But we listen to a lot of like pop, country, okay. like hip hop. Like it's kind of like all over the place. Like I, in some ways, I think pop, for me anyway, I think Lee feels the same. Is it's kind of like kind of more like like pushing against it's it's like perceived limitations more than like a lot of heavy metal stuff sure you know? yeah just like there's interesting stuff and like experimentation going on which i think is pretty rad like yeah and then black metal you're getting we sound more second wave than you yeah it's like a lot of like and i mean some of that stuff is great you know but mm -hmm. it's like you can just go back and listen to a record you bought 15 years ago right. and hear it probably better and yeah. record it shittier right. which is I think part of the component of a lot of black metal that I like is just kind of like the underproduction you know? right. Right. Like just just total garbage sound just, I mean I listen to a lot of like kind of like noise and experimental stuff that yeah. I mean you, you could literally record it in a bathroom right. and it would probably be like I mean a lot of it probably is you know it's like home stuff it's great right. 
Do you have any um, favorite tracks from your own work or from your collaborations? I really like uh, the ebb and flow of tides. Okay. And I see that I think that was the first one that our friend Bo did a video for us for. All right. And that one always like I love that song for some reason it just like it sounds nasty. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, change pace a little bit here. Um, I caught a clairvoyant article that uh, Lee commented in. There's a bunch of different artists that commented in right after oh, the yeah, election. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he was talking about the future of things based on the election. Um, you guys still thinking about that? Do you have any thoughts post inauguration about what, where this country's headed? And... Probably got a lot of fighting to do, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it just seems pretty ridiculous. I don't know. Yeah. Like, there's no common ground people can will, will like look to find. Right. So, you think um, politics has a place in the music scene? Oh, definitely. Okay. I mean, people like you know feel strongly about a thing or they believe in a thing. Of course, like that, that, how can that not come through? You know, like, right. you have like passions about different things. Like they're gonna come through, like as they should. I mean, I, it seems like everyone. I don't know. People can't get together. Right. Um, you consider the body a political project at all? Or is that just more personal? I mean, there's part of both, but I mean, it's like politically, like my political feelings are, are pretty like, I think they have a, a kind of destructive quality like and I, it, it, it it's kind of like well what are we getting what we deserve is like right. people who like you know like whatever you think about what's happening it's like it's obviously things are going to have like a heavy change and what was that going to be like you know right yeah i think like there's a lot of people that are like oh let's just see what happens but it's like those are people that are very privileged to like have that kind of viewpoint without having like looking like looking down the barrel of like a very large rifle, you know. Right. Like, sure. It's like people of color, like anyone in the LGBT like community, like uh, women. Like I mean, yeah. Any thoughts on what we should be doing? I mean, I do, but they're probably not good things to say in public. I mean, <laughs> I understand that. Uh, well, let me ask you this one, too. Um, this is also from the same interview with Noisy. Uh, they were asking a lot about um, guns. Mm -hmm. And as part of that conversation, we talked about how you guys are, him at least, are, I think that he put it as far left as you can go. Uh, can you talk about what that means at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I think we're, we're pretty much like... I would say anti anti government, mm -hmm. anti system, like you know, like anti power. I mean, it's like anything. Like if 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 like things go the way that you know people like will like be like super hyper alarmist about like whatever's happening. But it's like if you're if you're like stuck in this argument about like all oh, the like like. Especially like regarding like guns, they're like, oh, guns mm -hmm. are bad, and it's like, well, I mean, what's gonna happen when, you know, like that that that's the only option left, like, right? To protect yourself, your community, your loved ones, your family, like like-minded people, like it's like I would like to have the access to and know how to like use those tools, you know? And it's like I don't know, it's it sometimes seems pretty pretty bleak that. You know, the only way to like go against like a system that is oppressive to like the majority is through violence, and I think people kind of overlook that fact. Like, so who knows? All right. Could be fighting in the streets. You never know. Like 20 years ago, you know, it was like, oh, maybe the, this will never happen in our lifetime. And then like it was like everyone got crazy when George W. Bush was elected. Oh, it's just gonna go crazy. And I was like, maybe. And now it's like, well, I could see there be like. I mean, I don't know, like, um, at least a precursor to, like, some sort of, like, civil unrest that's violent, you know, I don't know. 
we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, now that we've gotten all heavy with that, uh, yeah. <laughs> we should probably wrap up the interview as the crowd files in here. Is there anything else you want to say before we go? Uh, buy guns. <laughs> all right. Get ready. I mean, who knows? Like, it's a strange world. Really. It is. Well, thank you very much for your awesome, time. Awesome, man. Thanks so much. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you got. You probably got the.